Good evening. This is Doc Severson for the Theo Knight Report for Thursday, January 11th. I have the chart of the spiders up here, which is the ETF for the S&P 500. And every week on Saturday, what I do is I calculate the expected move for that week. So the expected move is going to be more of a case of if we put this on, you know, here's the, the price and the price can go up or down. I'm looking at just the standard normal distribution curve and 68.3% of the time it's going to be anywhere between one, you know, minus one plus one standard deviation. So everybody knows those areas and they become well-known places of support or resistance. And right now, as we speak, the price is right up against that expected move. We have about 50 minutes left to trade here today on Thursday. The price is very, very close to that expected move. A lot will depend on what happens tomorrow morning with bank earnings. So last week, as you might have guessed, we uh, the, the price just completely blew through the expected move for the week as we got into the year. So we had the, again, that was Monday off. So we had Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, just completely blew through the expected move. And what are the odds that we're going to have two weeks back to back where the expected move gets blown through? So the answer to that question really comes down to a couple of things. First of all, it comes down to the banks. If we go over here to the financials, the financials are actually one of the sectors that have a little bit left in the tank. And they've gone through a fairly extensive consolidation here. And this is how markets move, right? Range expansion moves to range contraction, builds up energy, and then it breaks out again. In fact, one of the big changes that I've made in this year as we've ticked over to 2018 is honestly, it just doesn't matter what's happening here at the monthly and the weekly charts. So it is important to look at the trend. Obviously, if I want to take a bullish trade, I'd rather see the trend going to the upside on both of these time frames. But the energy levels just don't matter anymore like they used to. All of these energy levels used to come into play when we do technical analysis back in 2012, even 2013, as strong as that was, it still mattered. We would still find exhaustion at these levels when the weekly chart would go into exhaustion and then that would go into consolidation. However short that was, even if it was for a couple of weeks, it would still take a pause. That's just not happening right now. We're getting a runaway market that's going into euphoria and there's no technical study that's on earth right now which is going to measure that form of raw emotion. It's just like at the bottom of the 2008-2009 crisis. You know, you could go back here and say, well, markets are oversold. And they kept on going and they kept on going and they kept on going. So if you traded through that, you know what I'm talking about. Well, we've got the converse of that now. Markets are overbought. It's beyond description to say that it's overbought. So right now what I'm having to do is just ignore any kind of variable studies that I have on my weekly and monthly charts and just look at, zoom in on the daily charts, that's enough. And so what I'm seeing is still some potential. Now, the financials have gotten kind of a head start on the big earnings that start tomorrow. So if we go out here to Market Watch, we're going to see BlackRock, we're going to see JP Morgan, we're going to see PNC, we're going to see Wells Fargo. So these are the big ones, and then the rest of them come right behind on the heels early next week. So let's look at JP Morgan for a minute. Now, across the board, actually, this is a pretty good chart. We have good trend on the monthly chart, good trend on the weekly chart, good trend on the daily chart, and actually we have a fair amount of energy available for this thing to go. Now you can see that today it's getting a head start on tomorrow morning's earnings. So it's going to be the earnings come out first thing in the morning, right before the market opens, about an hour before the market opens or so. So what I'm looking for tomorrow is a little bit of a gap up. So the best way to change these things or to trade these things is actually we found to just to do a simple in out spread, just to take an at the money spread, Look for a quick move on this thing. Get in, get your fair share, get out. The nice thing about the at the money spread is it doesn't really matter about the volatility. Yes, the volatility collapses after the announcement, but an at the money spread is neutral in terms of Vega. The other thing that I brought to your attention last Tuesday this week was the only index that has any gas left in the tank 
right now is the Russell. So while the S&P and the Dow and the NASDAQ are running on fumes as it goes into these final stages of at least this stage of euphoria, we could still get a little bit of a pullback and then this thing continues on. I'm not looking for a crash anytime in the first quarter here. So right now, I think we're going to see the baton passed over to the Russell, and we're seeing a great example of that today. Range contraction. In this case, range contraction. The Russell's been very choppy lately. Leads to range expansion. Huge breakout today on the Russell 2000. Now, guys, I want to close out my video by just bringing up another example of what a runaway market looks like. And probably the best example that we can use is to go back here to 2010 to silver. Okay, what you'll find is that just like in a bear market, a bear market will start from a very noisy beginning and the strongest selling comes at the very end as the price flushes out and becomes a true waterfall decline. This was the case in late 2008, early 2009. And the converse of that, and we haven't really seen this for quite some time, not to this degree, but a euphoric market, the majority of the gains come right at the end. Notice how the biggest candle here is the one at the very end. This is where FOMO kicks in, fear of missing out. So it's not fear of missing out only, but it's also panic in buying. This is where we get panic buying coming in. Look, face it, we're eight days into the new year and the majority of fund managers are already behind the overall market. They're already losing alpha against the overall market. This is what we could see. So don't look at your studies and say, but it's got to stop. It's got to stop. It's got to stop. Don't stand there on the freight train tracks as the locomotive bears down on you and say, but it's got to stop. My study said that it was going to stop. When we get into animal spirits like this, this is some of the most dangerous times. This is where you're going to see the biggest gains and the biggest losses and when fear and greed can really kick in. And we're just now starting that. We're just now starting that process. So this could run actually quite a bit higher, regardless of what all the studies show. Look, guys, I get it. I mean, you look at the P.E. values, all the P.E. values are sky high and everybody looks around each other and says, you know, with their palms up and they say, hey, it, it can't be different this time. And no, it's not different this time. Eventually, you'll be proved right. But can you afford to go through something like this? So just make sure that you're trading with the trend for now. The market will tell us when it's ready to go down. Markets don't do this. They don't go straight down. They get very noisy up at the top. The market will announce when it's ready to start giving up its gains. It'll start that by one very nasty day, which may only be good for three, four, five percent. But honestly, a five percent down day in today's market is going to scare the dickens out of most people. So I guess what I'm saying is don't fight the tape. Don't try to be the first bear on the way down. It has not paid out for the last nine years. All right, folks, that is it for today's report. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you tomorrow.